Hello everybody, this is the second episode of uh, Chorie et al. podcast. This is uh, an episode about communication and more specifically, what makes communication efficient and what are the tools everybody can use to have a better time making themselves heard, earning the respect or even admiration of work colleagues or people in their personal lives. In other words, this is a conversation about soft skills. Mm-hmm. Today I have with me two great people that I have met during my master's degree at the University of Edinburgh, Nikos and Edward. Can Hello. you guys say a few words about yourselves, uh, what you are studying and what is your career track so far? Want to go, Nikos? No, you can start. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Ed, I'm 24. I happen to be also from Romania. I study comparative literature at the University of Edinburgh. And my career path, I don't know, like journalist, yeah, uh, yeah, part-time sure. writer, uh, I don't know, like just a bunch podcast, of podcast creator. host, podcast producer, yep. a bunch of things to do with creating content to, especially in the digital medium. So like I write about video games, I write about like, you know, movies sometimes. Great stuff, great stuff. Yeah. Nikos? Great. Well, I'm Nikos. I come originally from Greece. I currently study international human resource management and have an inclination to model human behavior so it would be kind of career i don't have a specific title or a job role but something mm. about that something about people change and development that's your passion my inclination and passion as well yeah great thank you guys for participating today so maybe i should first answer why are we talking about communication and who are we to talk about communication so let's give ourselves some legitimacy so edward you said mm-hmm. You study comparative literature and you're also a digital creator. Yeah. So pretty much always uh, about communication. Is it writing and talking, speaking, always thinking about it in that realm? I mean, yeah, obviously, even even since high school, if you know anything, obviously you happen to be from Romania, but like in Romania, the pathway systems have kind of like lock you into like mm-hmm. either the humanities or sciences or mathematics right. and informatics, right? So that's kind of like locked in. Mm-hmm. When you start on humanities, just in general, it happens to be from Romania or most other countries which have like kind of like a pathway system, you kind of are locked in into this idea of like everything is about soft skills, everything is about communication, everything mm-hmm. is about the human. You know, ah, being, okay, okay. That's kind of the, uh, yeah, the, felt the, the, the part from the humanities, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then leading into literature, I think a common misconception about like uh, people is like, hey, like if you want to know something about anyone, you go into psychology. That's the worst thing you can do because psychology is the science of the brain. It's the science, science of like why we act together with like sociology, right? Mm. Literature is not even a science. It's like literally like interpreting, it's reading, it's writing, it's communicating, right? Mm-hmm. So I think for me, it's always been an important part. And I was yeah. doing, I had a stunt doing some, some HR stuff in high school. Mm-hmm. So I was recruiting, I was interviewing, I was speaking to a lot of people, especially mm-hmm. like people that I didn't know or that I didn't know beforehand and that also I was in charge of. So you have to really know how to express yourself, Yep. how to put yourself out there. I remember even in high school, uh, I did a public speaking competition in English. That was a big deal when, mm, when we were. Mm-hmm. So I went to the national phase, you know, I did really well right. in terms of communicating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I have some tips and tricks in terms of like just fastly communicating, right? But I think even if you don't happen to be like in, in humanities, I think still I still think uh, communication is a vital part. But oh. I think the division between career communication and public communication like social communication perhaps uh, yeah, we is like, is like yeah. wider for no no me. right yeah. now we just focus on communication do you, yeah. do you think it's a transfer, transferable skill oh yeah soft skills are transferable skills like okay. that's that's part of the definition right like hard skills like for example mm-hmm. if, if you do physics if you do informatics if you do computer science that's a hard skill because you are you are programmed into learning a particular language like you know like whatever mm-hmm. like you do that's not with with humanities it's like oh well it's all about how you apply it. I also am a writer, I write in digital. No one's really taught me how to use WordPress, but people taught me how to write well. So like, you, yeah, you, you, can, you can take all of these skills and kind of like, so find would you different say, ways to- Would to you say it. that uh, your understanding of communication, efficient communication mm-hmm. was developed more during the high school or during the degree in UK? So comparative literature helped you more build a better and deeper understanding of this topic or do you feel that you had 
pretty much everything from the get-go when you start a university? It's difficult because communication, as with just learning in general, it's a yeah. it's a infinite process. It well, is a process that never really stops. Would you your say idea. that uh, your skill in communicating your ideas, whatever, however complex mm -hmm. they may be, would you say they improved significantly after you joined university or after that man, those those many experiences mm -hmm. during high school when you had to maybe take charge of other people and uh, yeah talk with them or you know you were responsible mm -hmm. you had some responsibilities and so on pretty much you know you're building uh, this understanding from experiences mm -hmm. rather than some theory but do you feel that yeah you had this deep understanding at 18 19 or i what, i, I think yeah. what university helped me in particular because mm -hmm. i moved countries like yourself like you right. as well um, you venture into multicultural communication. You realize mm -hmm. that, like, you know, I did a year abroad. You also realize there's people who don't speak the way you do, who don't communicate the way mm -hmm. that you do. And then you have to realize, okay, how do you communicate instead? Then it's like, okay, how do I tailor my system? I, again, I did a year abroad in Japan. Mm -hmm. Communication was also non verbal. It was also about, like, hey, traditions. It was also about, like, understanding. It was also, mm -hmm. it, I think my time at university helped me understand, okay, there are many pleasure ways of expressing yourself. What is unique about me and how can I best, you know, interact with people from all over the world? Like today, I feel like I'm confident enough to be like, okay, I'm from Romania, I'm Romanian. I can speak with someone from everywhere in the world because I have been in that position. I think in high school, it is still a very much a, usually an environment that you are familiar with because you have your family, you have your friends, you have your classmates. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really very much a, a more fixed, Kind of, kind of scenario. Yeah, you kind yeah, of yeah. Be in, your, your social groups are more fixed. When you go to university, you meet people kind of all the time, and people from varied backgrounds, so like people who are different. The right? feeling that I'm getting is that through experiences, you build yourself up. Like you build your people, skills yeah. up. It's not uh, that you study comparative literature that really made the big difference, because being put in this international <clears throat> environment made you have contact with so many different cultures yeah. you went to japan it's also an experience mm -hmm. it's not about the degree necessarily i mean literature is not teaching you about communication it's not about communicating your ideas yeah and, because you yeah. you can actually go study pr and then yeah, yeah, communication you know. organize obviously your thoughts, yeah it does so yeah, 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 yeah. Totally. It, yeah. It, it's it's a nifty benefit but my study yeah. was still literature you know but right as an extension, no, that's, the soft skills kind of come up. That's that's a good uh, that's a good maybe thing to notice. So it's still experiences that pretty much make all the difference for you. And like this as well, yeah. I, I, I remember I did sociology mm -hmm. back in high school, but no one really cared about the definitions. I mm. think I think you eventually learn to to phrase communication in the way, or even charisma in the way that you want to. Right? I don't think you go into the dictionary and you're like, oh, what do what does the Oxford English Dictionary define as charisma or communication? I think you kind of wrap your head around it. I think it eventually becomes something that you like, realize how to do, right? Yeah, I, I'm also when I, it works with experience because when you have like a new terminology to learn, mm -hmm. you need to connect it with some kind of experience that you have before. Otherwise, it, it is a matter of uh, weeks in order to forget about that, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. Uh, so, now moving uh, on to you, Nikos. Yep. So you are studying uh, human resource management. Yeah, international yes. human resource management. International. Even though background is completely different, mm -hmm. I come from civil engineer background. And if you ask me, what do I know about communication? It's not like I'm professional or something. Or I have like, I I've been actually an amateur actor, so I've been practicing in front of uh, of an audience. Mm -hmm. Even now, during the, uh, the Edinburgh Award, I was practicing pl mm -hmm. public speaking. So I was trying at every every session, talking with HR managers, leaders, entrepreneurs. I was trying to show up myself, try to talk, ask a question or two, mm -hmm. have a conversation. Mm -hmm. So articulate myself in a better mm -hmm. way so people can understand me. That's what I was trying. What's, what's the biggest audience you've ever had? It was like 60 people. 60 people, yeah. Online, virtual. Now. Oh, virtual. Yeah, virtual. It's like... It's not the same experience when you are mm -hmm. like in front of real people, but when I was uh, playing as an actor, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it was like 100 people. Yeah. 100, okay, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but yeah. it worked like completely different mm -hmm. because I couldn't really concentrate on the people. I was concentrating to, you know, on the, the cameras, void. On the to, to the void. Yeah. Like, I don't mm -hmm. know how to describe mm -hmm. it. <laughs> and you're also a s becoming a certified coach. Is that correct to say? 
Um, yeah, actually, I collaborate with a coaching company named Mindful Talent. Mm -hmm. And now I work as a coachee for another coach that he wants, to, or that another uh, practitioner. Yeah. So I try to to speak myself all the time when I speak with my coach and mm -hmm. go deep, deep and deeper mm -hmm. and try to express myself. Mm -hmm. This also helps me to organize my thoughts because English is not my mother tongue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we understand that, <laughs> but it's all right. Yeah. And you're, you've also been uh, part of the Hellenic army. So yeah, you've, you've been in charge of uh, I've been in people. charge of uh, like, for me, the fixed amount of people that I had was like 10 people each time. And I also I was responsible for the onboarding of mm -hmm. all the people, and it was change it was change changing shifts every three months. Mm -hmm. So I met like thirty people and lead twenty seven of them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's plenty of experience being a, a leader. So being a leader, yeah. Yeah, yeah. For you, Edward, it's uh, you've also been a leader, mm -hmm. but you also have a lot of communication, uh, a lot of experience collaborating. Let's yeah. say, but in a leadership position, maybe. Not as much as uh, not as much. I think. I think. Yeah. I think it's a difference, right? I mean, for yeah. me, it was always part leadership is part of the NGO. I yeah. I did a thing called the European Union Parliament where I went to. I was the ambassador for that. So I I was I was in charge of like people, but perhaps in a more educational setting. Mm. Like I was working with an NGO called ISEC. You might be familiar yeah, yeah, with yeah, it. Mm. And then I was the vice president of like basically talent management. It was a leadership-ish type of position mm -hmm. that involved me actually like inboarding, you know, mm -hmm. recruiting interview. Yeah. But I wasn't the person who was like, oh no, we take these executive decisions now. I was, however, put in position of like, okay, I have, the president is not here. I have to take charge. I have to do this. I yeah. have to, you yeah, know, yeah, but again, so for me, it's more so in an educational setting yeah. and yeah, more, yeah, yeah. more of a NGO kind of and like. And it was not the status quo, it, it was just whenever you had to well, take the Whenever lead. needed. Yeah. Yeah, I was yeah, like yeah, second in command, yeah. that kind of yeah, way, right? Yeah, 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 yeah sure. Before we go forward, um, I would like to say the motivations behind this uh, podcast. So first of all, coming from a STEM background, STEM background myself, and up until getting my first job uh, just after my uh, bachelor's degree, I have ignored soft skills. Mm -hmm. So anything that comes uh, in relation to presentations, leadership, report writing, networking. Mm. I mean, yeah, I was pretty much you know focused on just learning that technical skill and. Uh, pretty much not concentrating on anything else. And it did not take much time after I got the job to realize that these soft skills are actually the thing that promotes you more than mm -hmm. the technical skills that you have. And uh, not surprisingly, my colleagues that were coming from STEM, they kind of have the same problems. Mm -hmm. So presentations that are not very effective, maybe mm -hmm. they're lengthy or, you know, if they need to translate the results to the higher management, they do, maybe, you know, they put a hundred caveats in a presentation or, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, it's, it's good to have everything into consideration, but the, the higher management, yeah, it's not needed for that. So yeah. uh, usually STEM graduates and you know, Nico is also uh, being, uh, having an undergraduate degree in engineering, mm -hmm. maybe you faced uh, some of the same um, yeah, I was, uh, I was really problems. bad at communicating mm. myself. I mean, even now, to be honest, I'm trying to organize my thoughts properly. So because to me, it makes sense. But the thing is to make sense for you as well. when I actually <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, So exactly. that's that's a difficult part. And be I, I believe you and I agree with you that when you come from STEM background, yeah. somehow your mindset is fixed. And mm. yeah, you, you yeah, want yeah. to present results and uh, calculate numbers. Mm -hmm. And if the number is correct or seems to be correct, then you're down. You don't really need to go to other person. Yeah, you feel like you're, yeah, exactly, exactly. You, you feel, feel like, like, the, like your the, job the, is, yeah. is over. That's yeah, it. Yeah, your I, job is over. Yeah, and yeah. the other person is meant to understand you somehow. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> somehow. Exactly, exactly. And I think uh, maybe STEM graduates make the mistakes of putting that sort of mentality towards everything mm -hmm. you know <laughs> everything in your yeah, life yeah 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 like exactly that. maybe you go on a trip or something you just make the plan of the trip and then it's like you know i've done and then you're expecting everybody to mm -hmm. maybe stick to that or stick you know plan, yeah, yeah yeah it's like you know i put everything uh, you know the how everything prepared yeah yeah i prepared yeah. everything everything is fit together it works it's nice let's just stick to it you know <laughs> it's like more more of, uh, cut 
they cut clearly let's say yeah, yeah okay. uh, clear cut clear cut yeah more more clear cut in uh, the way that we express ourselves and handle ourselves mm-hmm. yeah which is not uh, it's not charismatic mm-hmm. <laughs> and we'll see about that when we talk about the books yeah uh, interesting that you say this because my experience has always been like i remember being in middle school and having to like give presentations like i remember i had presentations about like yeah, I must have been like 13, 12 when I gave my first PowerPoint presentation and then eventually you just grow up to do this. Mm-hmm. And I remember my professors actually coming up to me and being like, hey, you, you're actually good at this. Like, I remember after presentations, like, I had a presentation about comic books when I was 17 and my friends were like, this is the best presentation I've ever seen. And I'm like, holy shit, you know, like, it's that kind mm-hmm. of thing of like, for me, it's more of a kind of like muscle that like every time like there's a presentation, I'm like, yeah, I know exactly how to do it. I visualize the slides, I visualize the animations, I kind of know what I'm putting it. And it's for me, the slides themselves are the backdrop. And that's kind of like what we've always, always been told. You are the presentation, like it's mm-hmm. me, yeah, exactly, it's, it's exactly. my brain, it's, it's what I can do, it's what I can say, it's what I've been thinking about. Mm-hmm. The presentation is actually just the support, right? And for me, it's always been like, statistics matter obviously graphs matter but at the same time it's also about like explaining yourself and like having like a rationale and and for me i think the goal is always when when i'm presenting something for people to understand i'm also you know i i understand i I think where you're coming from and i hope that you do as well it's it's all about like making yourself yourself understood and not misunderstood right it's like it's i think it's also humanity of like hey like I'm just a dude also writing this, also doing work. I think mm-hmm. if you've done this, like you know where I'm coming from, you know? Kind of so do you, do you prepare, not prepare, do you ask yourself specific questions in order to fix your presentation in a way that other people could yeah, understand we'll, it better? Yeah, we probably get, because this is can, a technical question, but okay. we probably can probably, get You can to probably anticipate, like but I don't. Like, I definitely don't. Like, I remember, mm-hmm. I, no, no, like, I don't think about questions from the audience because I know regardless of what happens I know the answer because I'm the one who's, who's done the work on this mm-hmm. like you yeah. have to allow yourself to like trust in yourself and be like whatever happens you know the answer and even if you don't that's even better because that's like oh I haven't thought about that like I'll just write it down like people you can even discuss yeah, it yeah, I, yeah and I appreciate that right like again with public speaking uh, because we were competing against each other there were people who like would actually get up and like ask the questions which are annoying mm-hmm. and then you've in my, in my case, I started predicted, predicting what they would ask and make what I would, I would have to like say so that they ask me exactly what I want to, so that you're always kind of like one or two steps ahead. Yeah, yeah. so mm-hmm. I think but this, obviously, this comes into the process that, of making that, a good that's, presentation. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, a, that's a presentation you kind of have to anticipate, right? Mm-hmm. So like, oh yeah, I, I assume you would ask me about this. Like, because, because I've prepared. Yeah, <laughs> because, because it's the questions that like, I, would put, <clears throat> I would ask myself. It's either you leave it out of the presentation, hoping that, that becomes a question, or you just address it in the presentation. Yeah, yeah. this fun, is more about yeah. theory right now, so... A fun thing to do is like, ask yourself, like in my presentations, I have a slide that's like, so what? Literally, like, why do I care about this? That's why I convince myself, that's what I convince you as well, like, hey, this is important. Because with any given presentation, it's like, why do I care about it? And you have to give people reasons. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it's it's great that you developed uh, those skills yeah. really soon. Um, yeah, definitely. F- for me, after I learned how to make presentations, everything changed. Mm-hmm. Better, you know. It, it it suddenly became better. You know, people would talk about my results uh, more often, and they would ask for my presentations to show them to other mm-hmm. people. Mm-hmm. But when they were just uh, you know no style, no <laughs> just plain information, the hard facts. Yeah, it, it didn't it really yeah. go my way. And I would want to also move on to the second reason why I wanted to talk about communication. So fresh university graduates and uh, young people in general have never been taught how to promote themselves. For real? Yeah, we don't have courses like that in school. Or maybe we mm-hmm. have and it's not a... I mean, it's not compulsory, for, of course. And uh, if it's optional, maybe just a few people take it and that's it. Mm-hmm. And uh, as a result, we don't have uh, tools, either internal or external, to know tools that we know how to use when faced with challenging social situations, be it an interview, being a university, you know, yeah, university interview or job interview, public speaking, or you even have to be a leader. Even with a friend, yeah. Yeah, even a dis- <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, these are the things that are really make an impact on your life. For sure. And so this podcast would be more for uh, oriented towards uh, 
maybe STEM graduates and young people in general. So the two books that we have uh, our focus on, actually one, uh, one nice thing that uh, we've done uh, last time um, with you, with you and Nikos, mm -hmm. with, uh, before talking about the books, we judge them by their cover. So maybe we, we will can, do that again. Yeah, we, we, can, <laughs> we can try to do that. I mean, this is, this is paradox, uh, basically. So this first, it's inside. compelling people. I'll just put it on the... It's all about strength. Right? On the oh, screen. Gonna on the screen? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to put it on the screen. So uh, <laughs> what, what can you say about the cover? Red cover. First of all, red <laughs> is power. Red is, red is yeah. power. Lion and, is a power. Yeah, and it's a symbol of uh, regality, of royalty as well. It's, you know, animal mm. kingdom, ruler mm. of the animal kingdom. Yeah. Um, you have a cat which is domesticated, so this it's it's the, the same kind of family, suggesting that like to me it's a gift of a the like strength transformation, side of right? It's yeah. it's it's the it's the same coin, different side of the same coin because they are cats, the same kind of family. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, interestingly enough, I don't see any warmth to the to the cover. It's just no, it is a very pragmatic cover. Strength and then weakness, and I don't see. Maybe I can see warmth because yeah, it's just... Yeah, it, it uh, could be like... Uh, it, it's, maybe. It's, it's pretty pragmatic and uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely red and grey. Uh, Little Brown is a good publishing house. Uh, I don't know this particular publishing oh, house. Yeah, yeah it was a bestseller, yeah. bestseller for, uh, for quite a while. And uh, very interesting, it's actually a required reading at Harvard Business School. Yeah, which means nothing. Which means nothing. <laughs> Let's see, we'll talk about that. Uh, can you help me with that? And the second book that we're gonna focus on is The Charisma Myth by Olivia Fox Cabane. Mm. And it, they really seem complementary because this one is blue, <laughs> that yeah. one is yeah. red. So this is more strength and calm. It uh, exudes a little bit more charisma than just yeah, yeah, sheer sure. power. I mean, there's also something that you have to realize when comparing them both like this. Mm. You're going to realize that it's very simple mm -hmm. as yeah. well because they're non-fiction because they target a very specific audience that's like more towards no-nonsense kind of thing, right? Mm -hmm. Like you have to realize it's not at all abstract. These are symbols and it's very clear to me, oh, this is Peacock because like, you know, we speak about charisma, we speak about the dance, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's the wooing other people, right? It's convincing other people. Right. Text of the book is obviously bigger. This is red for compelling people. This is black because the the onus is on the blue is mass the art of personal magnetism that's this is the, the key thing so like the blue works together with the peacock blue here it's compelling people the subtext the, the subtitle is not really that important so it's it's interesting that like it's blue because this is like hey like it's personal magnetism this is make us influential influence versus magnetism it's art against influence it's art against quality so you all, there's also these point. things, these things that you have to, to realize of like charisma is a quality versus charisma is an art that leads into personal magnetism, right? Okay, so yeah, if we just talk, uh, go into the content a little bit, um, the charisma myth goes more into the process, so the art mm -hmm. of it, and the compelling people, it's more theoretical. Mm -hmm. Could be, I would say. Even even though they they give. Yeah explanations and they, they want to teach they you do they do it. they do give explanations and examples which are quite useful sometimes so that was the cover the dissection of the cover yeah. the mm -hmm. cover review cover mm -hmm. review the first book that we're gonna focus on is uh, compelling people mm -hmm. um, this book is an excellent introduction into what effective communication is based on the whole book can be summarized in a in a sentence compelling people display both strength and warmth in a high degree because everybody displays strength and warmth but you need to be <laughs> somewhere in the middle uh, no, no we actually have in the book if uh, if you remember we have a plot mm -hmm. with the strength the matrix, on one yeah. yeah yeah exactly well, strength on one side and so yeah you need to go the other axis and that and exactly yeah, yeah you need to be here yeah yeah, yeah i mean i, I will show that it's an x and y you know? yeah x and y yeah so you need you need to be on the diagonal but very high up if you if you're low in both, nobody's gonna care about you. So <laughs> the yeah the the thing is we need to learn how to get, get up on, yeah up. get up on the dia diagonal because if we're too strong then people are gonna fear us mm -hmm. 
and maybe they're gonna love us, but they're also gonna gonna fear us. So it's not the absolute best way to handle things. And if you go only warmth, people are gonna pity you because you have no strength, but your warmth and you know you're kind to other people and you're very comforting. So mm -hmm. the goal is to to get up in both uh, in both strength and warmth. So the second book is more the Charisma Myth by Olivia Fox Cabane. It's more practical mm -hmm. than compelling people. The book concentrates on methods everybody can use to create a charismatic mental state such that they improve uh, their position in society, be it negotiating, asking for a raise, convincing others to support uh, their company or product, everything, anything like that. So now, you, both of you have had uh, some time with, uh, with these two books. What are your opinions? First of all, on uh, compelling people, just the general thoughts. Do you feel they added anything to your life? Uh, first on compelling people and then we move on to charisma. So Can I start? Yeah, go for it. Nikos. Okay, uh, okay, okay. Um, what I like about the compelling people is uh, I didn't categorize strength and warmth in that specific way. When I communicate, I've never considered myself, oh, am I now in a warm state or in a strength state? Okay, okay. So I've Are never you thinking thought... about it now? No, no, I, I've never thought... Now, now it changed. The mm -hmm. way I behave, I'm trying to filter my behavior through these two mechanisms. Even though I'm not doing it all the time, but uh, what I'm trying to do is, okay, am I too, too, of, too warm now? Do I express mm -hmm. too much warmth now, or am I, or I actually exude like strength, and all this kind of stuff? So, I try to decipher my my behavior, but the the sweet spot is the combination, as you talked before, which is really really difficult to attain that. All right, because it's also about the chemistry that happens inside of you. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you feel like strength, and you have like the testosterone levels like top yeah so top level, we can actually like just uh, because you mentioned it too briefly mm -hmm. so indeed um, strength and warmth biologically they are this the, they are actually opposing the polar opposite yeah, yeah yeah because testosterone is what makes you stronger and oxytocin is what okay. makes you warmer and actually testosterone is a very potent inhibitor yeah. of uh, oxytocin so yeah. if you're uh, very high in testosterone it's going to be harder for you to be warm just to make that completion. No, no, no. Good. That was a good point. And so, yes, I, I always try to figure out a way to to observe myself so I can understand, okay, now maybe I'm overreacting regarding the strength mode, let's mm -hmm. say. Or sometimes I'm too sweet to be true. You see? You see? Yeah, yeah. And this is some kind of lens that I learned reading this book. Um, but yes, this is the point. I'm trying to, I think that it in, has increased uh, my self-awareness Great. in a way that I can observe myself from a different perspective. Great, great. And I think that's the point, right? Uh, yeah, I think mm. that's the point from this book. Yeah, but I think it was going to be yeah, if you, on if the if other end. <laughs> ju just uh, mentioning on that point very quickly and then moving on mm -hmm. to, to you, Edward. So if you can see yourself from the, if you have only your opinion and your feelings, mm -hmm. most people actually trust their feelings in the moment. So mm -hmm. if, if they're anxious, then they're going to start behaving anxious. But if they have that ability to see themselves from the outside as if the other, another person would see them, then they can change this behavior. Yeah, because you, and you you expand your awareness. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So you know something in you, so you. If, so that's if a you valuable, to, yeah, it's a valuable, valuable skill to have, Edward. So do you feel that compelling people added anything to your life? No, and it's. Uh, please, uh, please explain. Please expand. Yeah, obviously. Uh, or maybe not. <laughs> so I think it's difficult because the most interesting bit to to this book, which for me did absolutely nothing, it, it aggravated some feelings mm -hmm. I had. For me, the most interesting idea is that like, okay, we have strength and warmth. The problem is, it's not a particularly new concept to begin with. Think about Shakespeare. Cleopatra and Antonio already kind of already hinted at like reason and passion. That people need to have these two things in balance anyway. Dale Carnegie in his in, in, in his influential book, right? It's uh, influencing people. How to Dale win? Carnegie. How to will and influence people, right? 
he already kind of made similar similar kind of like arguments of like oh the best way to to win an argument is to avoid it completely that's what charisma means to just like know when when to win for me even the base theory is one one unoriginal and two kind of not really that useful for me it's outdated for me it's also sexist at points for me it's also racist at points there are problems if you look at it from a social political standpoint there are incredible problems with the book that for me like i read through it and i was like so I, wait, wait, wait. problems there are problems this this to me is a problematic book yeah. especially Can you elaborate on uh, yeah yeah because, because yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah give me a second give me problems. a second i have i have actual quotes so yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. So, give me a second. Where is it? Here we go. So, first of all, it didn't it didn't improve your life. It, it made it worse. Made it yeah. worse. Yeah. So it made it worse. Yeah. To me, I, I was aggravated reading it. So, like, I was like, hey, there there are interesting. problems. Interesting. Let's so, hear. Let's hear. There is a section on page forty three when you have Spike Lee's uh, movie. Do the right. Let do yeah, the right thing. If you can thing. give a little bit of context, that would be helpful. Yeah, I I have the actual I have actual lines. Mm -hmm. So, they quote racial slurs and they quote from this scene from Spike Lee, a famous black director, American black director. He did the um, Kuklans Man as well. And he did a lot a, 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 a lot, of really, really good movies. He, you, surely you've seen him. He's the film director who is uh, the leader of, the, of Cannes this year. Anyway, okay. they completely misinterpret a scene in the film to give us an example. Which film? Uh, Do the Right Thing from, from Spike Lee. Okay, okay, I, I missed I that. Yeah, 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 no, I actually they could, missed they, that. They, they, it's, it's on page 43 and yeah. 44 on the actual... Okay. Obviously, the edition might be yeah, different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it is a complete, like, misunderstanding and misinterpretation okay. of what... Okay, can you go into that? Yeah, yeah, so... Uh, yeah, give me a so second. So, the context is, it's, it is from a movie by... It is from a movie by, by a famous black director about race. And then they use racial slurs. And then the, the problem is, what, they, what the conclusion... Actually, let me actually yeah, yeah, check, use check, yeah. use the actual book. Where it is? See, I hope it is the no, right. It, it's funny because I that didn't strike. Uh, but that, that's what I mean. Like, I, I think yeah, if, I if, if you're not that. paying attention to stuff like this, I think it it, it can be difficult. Anyway, I'm pretty sure I read the actual quote because I have I have the PDF. Yeah, no, let's go. Let's get into it. Uh, they, I remember they, they really use like racial slurs and it is also about like white men using ra uh, racial slurs. Okay, and so yeah, what's the quote? Um, sorry, give me a sec. I'll, I need to, I need to get my PDF out. Anyway, oh, okay. the other example because I have multiple. I have a list of my examples. I don't have the actual mm -hmm. quotes. I have a list okay. of the examples. Yeah, let's take it uh, step by step. There is know? in the first fifty pages. It's like strong women are called are referred to as bitches, and I think that is an offensive, sexist, misogynist term to throw in. Especially when referring to strong women. From from the get-go, to me, I'm already, like, resistant to a lot of the things that you say in the book, right? It's like, for, for me, there are problems with this. Mm -hmm. Like, that's not, absolutely not the way to do this. No, right? but, I mean, the, the book doesn't, it's, I think it's mentioned only once, and it's just simplifying the situation. To, to a degree that becomes offensive. I mean, they, they just say it once so that people... Uh, I no, I, I do remember when yeah. when they said the, the bitch word. I was uh, I was a little bit impressed. I, I didn't expect that to be in the book, but it's only once, and it actually talks about uh, exactly the strength profile. So if if I go a little bit into the book, go and maybe I up. maybe I should say this. So the way that the book is structured. So going to the contents, first you get into a little bit of theory and what strength and warmth are, and then they talk about the things that you inherit by uh, just being born and living. So okay. you, you may be a black man, you may be a white man, you may be tall, you may be short, uh, you may be fat or thin, you may be any, in many ways, right? Yeah, yeah. And each one, each uh, characteristic affects your strength and warmth profile without people actually interacting with you. So this is the first part of the book. And then it's uh, how you can play to your strengths and weaknesses. That is the second part of the book. And uh, we are talking now about the first part of the yeah, book, yeah. about the hand that you are dealt, as, it called, yeah. as it's called here, and it's about gender. So they talk it's about, about the well. strength and... It's about sexuality and, and it's about relationships as well. Yeah, I mean, you cannot really separate. Yeah. And, uh, and this one is about gender and strength profile, so strength and warmth okay. profile of men and women. Fair enough. Let, let, no, let's, just to give yeah, the context. Let's, let's give the benefit of that that's the case. It's, it's just that. But it's, it's also slightly 
a homophobic. There's a, there's a, there's a mention on, on page 69, coincidentally, about how Gaida, this is a quote from the actual book, how Gaida works is a perennially popular topic of argument. Gay people can signal with non-verbal cues, with men using more feminine cues and gay women using more masculine. What? But they gay dog also later. works through cultural yeah, cues. Ahead. That well-dressed guy with a defined muscle talking about his love for show tunes could be straight, but chances are he's not. That is. Uh, can you actually talk a little bit slower? Just oh yeah, sorry yeah. Question, yeah. So they they speak about gay dog and they speak about man hugs. Mm-hmm. How like when if like we like imagine if Nicholas and, uh, and and us hug, we project warm and comfort with one's masculinity, and in parentheses, see, I can hug a man and be straight. That is a homophobic thing to do, implying that, it, 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 to me, it's like already outdated. It's already like such like devoid of it's what it what it should be, you know? It, it, to me, it, it, the book kind of reeks of like immaturity. To me, it kind of reeks of, uh, reeks of a, a bit of ignorance. And I think, you know, you look into the backgrounds of, of, of the two authors, both of them are white men. And to me, it, it's kind of like a college conversation just on paper to some point. And that, those are the parts to me that like really irked me and really annoyed me. And that's why I'm like, I come off poorer from reading this book in many ways. Because I'm like, the, the core premise is not very interesting. It's not very original. And the examples are not based uh, in science. They're not backed by science. It's just anecdotes and stories people cobble together. For me, these two guys are more like storytellers. Like, they, it, it's a story they sell you for me. Like, you know, and, and then there's the second chapter of the, the second part of the book where they give advice. That's like super health, self-help for me in a way that's not even useful. That's to me, like, that's a throwaway part of the book. Not, mm. not to imply that the first part is either, isn't, isn't throwaway for me. Again, this is about mm. my experience, but to me, it's, it's so disappointing. And again, you know, we spoke that this is recommended reading at the Harvard Business School. I sure hope that it isn't anymore, right? Because we in speak about... Th- yeah, 2013. The yeah, we speak published, about, you know, we speak about privilege. When... We speak about being outdated. To me... So that, this book is 10 years old now? Almost. Could be, yeah. Almost, yeah. But, almost but, 10 years but, old. But it is quite outdated regarding but, yeah, some yeah, stuff. Yeah. But there is also some notions that still are out there. So it would make much more easier... The, the later examples that they give so you can connect the mm-hmm. dots and so, you can understand the meanings mm-hmm. I don't I don't know if they if they da, uh, done that deliberately yeah so you c- they can express like racial things mm-hmm. but I think that there are also people out there that because they lived like in 90s or, or the last one yeah yeah, yeah. That it's outdated, you know? yeah but you can understand what they're talking about because you f- you felt that you lived that so you you can see the difference now uh, maybe someone who is like 70 years old maybe couldn't really understand what he's talking mm. and maybe he or she thinks it's like oh it's uh, it's a kind of discrimination and it's racial but, but you, to, you know whenever you, you you encounter stuff like this you kind of have to push back against it. like this is why we don't do things like yeah, this yeah so right? i mean it's a book written 10 years ago so now pushing yeah. back on, yeah. uh, on a book like, i mean it no, doesn't no, make sense that's what i'm trying to yeah. say yeah. because maybe when it was written it was super okay and people would understand it Okay. Yeah. I mean, you maybe. Know. So maybe. Uh, just just to yeah. make sure that I understand. So the things that um, made the experience of reading mm. the book worse, or maybe just yeah, simply made the book worse. Yeah. Not, not necessarily just the experience of reading, just the book itself. So you find that some uh, some passages mm-hmm. at points problematic. Super problematic. Yeah, yeah. Some passages are uh, sexist, and also and racist and homophobic. And yeah, yeah, yeah. So. And the second one is that it's not original. It's not original, no. But like, it's not it's not the homophobic, so sexist. Th- this would be the two parts. big things, right? Yeah, it's not original. Is, is there a third one, or I, I missed? Uh... I mean, you already like I've already feel like I've debunked it. Let's let's speak about also. You know, you mentioned that they have chapters on relationships. I wanna I wanna I wanna quote from 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 these chapters about like, for me, it is so heteronormative as well. You know, like it is so like. Oh, men find happiness to be the most important trait in women, and women find confidence to be the most important trait in men. It, it, it also does the cardinal sin of a man speaking about what women want. It's also about like, oh, women want this, men want this, women want, want this from a man. You know, there are problems in like in terms of perspective, uh, perspectives and like, I, I, I very much dislike this uh, forced dichotomy of like, oh, men are strong 
like peacock behavior, women are, uh, are, are weak, right? Like, I don't, I don't think that that's the way we, ha- we, we still think about like gender dynamics today. No, but it does say later in the book that indeed these are the average, average characteristic of men and women. Mm. But as time goes on, they get more normalized, as in a man can uh, take more, can adapt more feminine behavior. Today you find men that are a hodgepodge of uh, behaviors from each side, let's say. Mm -hmm. So today it's more normal, but on average, you can make the distinction. Like the the distinction can be made even scientifically. Because of different hormones, you mean? Yeah, because of different hormones. And if you just, you know, if you just take people and take a survey of 100,000 people and you see their behavior, you will see that the behavior of the men compared to the behavior of the women will be different, you know, and you can quantify very well how different it will be. The how many times do they smile per day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How many times uh, do they help other people? How many times do they call, call their family? All these things you can actually segregate scientifically. It says here, the role of the man to make the move, the first move in relationships is actually about him demonstrating his strength to, to confidence and courage. Fortune favors the bold. To me, that's outdated. To me, that's not true. To me, like, I don't know, like, well, make... This is the first move, right? That they say. Yeah, so, wait, wait. So now, uh, what I also, a distinction that mm-hmm. I wanted to make. So I, I felt that these books could, um, in a sense, make people feel strongly about certain topics. Because uh, each one of us have been raised and have certain mm. ideas exactly about how to communicate. I mean, who am I to tell you how to communicate, yeah. right? In a, in a sense. And given that we have strong feelings about these things, it's maybe good to talk more about practicality. Okay. So indeed, you say uh, to, your, to you, it feels wrong. It feels wrong that uh, things actually happen this way. Mm. It's a personal feeling. Does it work in practice? What I mean? How about that? As in, uh, you are both uh, women. Right? Yeah, yeah. So this example, if we just read, read the example, yeah. it was you have to approach uh, a girl with confidence, mm. and that's gonna increase your chances of uh, yeah, just to make a better interaction in the end. If uh, you know you make better far, impression, about, make better yeah. impression if your goal is to get into onto well, a romantic relationship. So the thing is, first, it feels f- for you, it feels wrong the way that it's put in the book. But does it, it does it work in practice? No. Again, for me, this is this is men writing about what women what women want, and it's like ah, it's always it's always for me nebulous. It's like kind of like going to like. But you can base that you can base that on on experiments, right? I mean, you can just yeah, try. Yeah. How, how many times did you do the first? Yeah. Time? So let's let's actually talk okay. about personal yeah, yeah. experience. Let's, let's yeah, yeah, let's yeah, yeah. I never make the first move. Okay. Never. Mm-hmm. We just can't come to you. I mean, it's not. It's it, it, it is a conversation, right? Like I, I, I think, I think we we think. So another problem that I have, and this this is me kind of wrapping up. They mention here if two people are going for a job, one will be unconsciously labeled the strong one, and the other one, the other the the warm yeah, one. Right? Yeah, There's always right. like this fixed dichotomy which I want to break because to me it's silly. Like let's say we go to we go to the job. There's always someone that's superior and someone that's inferior. Yeah. To me. That is such a phenomenally like disappointing perspective. No, no, no. But uh, give give it a little, give it the context that it actually it's, deserves. It's warmth and, and, so, and strength. So no, no, yeah. they say that when the two candidates are left yeah. on the job. So let's say we've done it's a triage, mean, yeah. right, of uh, multiple steps, and uh, we've uh, gotten rid of the ones that are are not technically uh, good enough for our job. So if in, in in the end you're left with only two people they are gonna be characterized by strength and warmth like the the biggest impression because now you know that both of them are technically good enough for the job so in the end you're left with a profile do you want a stronger person for this job the both of these people are exactly the same they have the same technical ability but then you you know, is this person a better fit for our company? Yeah. Is it the one person or the strong person? But to me, is, is this person a better fit for this company? Is a different question than, oh, is this a warm person? Is this a strong person? What I'm trying to say, to me, this feels like it's like, it's either either or when it's more of a spectrum, where it's more of a like, hey, like, where where do you land? And also like, to me, it's like, it's, it's a bit, you know, diminutive to be like, oh, you're either strong or weak. That's, 
that's kind of all that all there is. Yeah, uh, actually, I think uh, Nikos, right here, you could jump in because uh, because of maybe your also your degree. You know, you will have to deal with recruitment quite a lot, and maybe you actually have read a little bit about this. No, no I didn't want to. No, no, no. I know, I know what you're trying to say. Yeah. Um, it's not. It's. I don't know if people want to overreact in a good way. Mm -hmm. at some point, maybe mm -hmm. they want to see that you're a super strength. Uh, you that you're super strong and you actually overreact. That. Overreact in a way that. If we have a normal conversation, you, you, you're not going to say, you know what, I have achieved that successfully and that. I mean, I use strong words mm -hmm. because I want to influence you mm -hmm. and I want to impress you. Okay. Right. But you don't know me. So it's my only catch. If I can influence you and convince you that I'm right, right fit for you, then it's right. So what I see is that they want you to talk through a specific, a specific framework, which is called STAR framework. It's situation, task, action, yeah. and um, results, all right? So even that, the fact that they want results somehow, mm -hmm. which means maybe the more the better, the more the merrier, I don't know. But at some point, if you have arguments that shows that you're a good leader, and I'm using mm -hmm. uh, deliberately the word uh, uh, leader mm -hmm. because many companies, especially here in the UK, okay? I'm not trying to put it uh, across the map yeah, because it, I don't know if it actually works for other countries as well. But what I've seen is, especially here in the UK, because they have a more individualistic perspective, mm -hmm. if you are strong, at some, somehow, like you, you can say that, okay, I lead that team, mm -hmm. I made that, I made this, uh, you, you see that I'm an active person, yeah. okay, they want that. Yeah, no, want, no, it's it's it it's, to but say. it's different. That's true. That's true. No, being, it's a different. Being proactive is, is being proactive is different. Taking the initiative is different. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. No, I'm not trying to say it's between uh, warmth and strength, but they want to see that something is uh, inside of you that motivates mm -hmm. you. But yourself motivated. Yeah. So I cannot really categorize it only to warmth or strength because you need to smile as well when you say all these things. There's a <laughs> there's a concept. I I think. I think it's called Ikigai from Japanese philosophy, mm -hmm. which relates to what is your reason for waking up in the morning. Oh. Like you, mm. you, you want to see how does this person work in terms of like how what do they do, how do they feel, how how are they in, in, in my work environment, and will I feel that they're competent? That, to me, competency is the key, right? Like oh, are you more competent than the other person to work? Then that's perfectly fine. I think. Strength and warmth for me are disappointing because it always implies that one is better than the other. That's kind of the problem that I have, you know. No, for no, me, no, for no. me, that's but that's that's kind of the implication. You have warmth and hot, and then strong and cold. And to me, it's like it is a it is a kind of a negative relationship to begin with. I know mm. I know the book makes the case that like oh you should have both of them, but it's like yeah, yeah. I mean you, the book is only about yeah that. I know, but like I know if you if you say oh strength, I think strength is desirable, whereas warmth is not really as desirable. You know, that's, that's the kind of like perspective I'm coming from. Again, why I like the Shakespeare thing mm -hmm. and Ant mm -hmm. Antonio and Cleopatra, that's passion and reason. To me, uh, it, it's, it's, a more, it's a more interesting uh, way to think about things anyway. Think about like uh, the, uh, the theories about the brain. You have the left side and you have the right side. The left side is more mathematical, more ta tactful. Mm -hmm. The right side more empathetic, more creative. Mm -hmm. I think even that kind of like separation is more interesting than, than, than strength and warmth. Because to me, it not only is tied in gender because the book kind of ties it with gender. It, it kind of like it's like you don't really have to be to to fit in these like two very for me arbitrary categories. Mm -hmm. It is it is the fact that it's arbitrary. It's it's a it's a word we use all the time in in literature when we have a problem. Everything's problematic. Everything's arbitrary. This is for me very arbitrary. Mm -hmm. So one thing uh, that I need to mention from your um, from the things that you said, you. You said that compelling people would make you believe that it's better to be strong, strong rather than warm. Yeah, that, 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 especially as a man, right? Especially because like that's that kind of the way the skew it of like, oh no, men need to be peacocks. Men need to men men men, men exude strength. To me, it already like skews the categories towards genders, and that's kind of for me a fault of the book as well. Of like, hey, like, and again, we we mentioned science. There's no hard evidence. There's no hard studies. There's, 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 to me, there's no real 
empirical evidence of like what they're saying. That, that's also one one of the down, downfalls of like. Can can you actually give a hard example? But uh, no, if, uh, there is no hard evidence yeah. behind behind what they're saying. Can yeah. you actually yeah. invoke one one thing that they're saying and you don't think there is? So even with testosterone, there is. I remember the paragraph. I don't remember what page. Yeah, yeah. But no, I, remember I, the, yeah remember I remember that. the paragraph about testosterone. I'm like, I yeah. want you to to delve into deep into the science of it. Give me, like we spoke about hard facts. Give me the facts. Give me studies. Give me how other people have related to it. To me, this doesn't feel like it's it it, it, it it's it's a very like it doesn't dissect charisma. It tells you what charisma is, and that's mm. kind of for me a problem because I'm like, well. But it's, it's more of a practical book. It doesn't. It doesn't go but, into but the, the first. For the first the half book. is the theory. The first half, to me, is like okay. Well, we've looked at charisma. Mm -hmm. We've studied the phenomenon. This is what we've seen from our observations that it is. But to me, these are not necessarily. Uh, all of the stories are like simply anecdotes. To me, there's nothing like. Oh, so what? I don't really care because I'm not convinced. And that's a problem. I need more to be convinced that what you're telling me is true. So getting back to this, um, so I think you are, it's, I don't think it's representing the book well saying that it makes you believe that it's better to be strong rather than warm. Okay, yeah, go for it. Yeah. So first of all, they say that compelling people have to project both and mm -hmm. in a very high degree. So men and women both. Yeah, the only thing Without. that you said before, like men needs to be like cocky. No they don't really have to be this book says it, all the more to be more warm yeah yeah exactly as exactly, exactly. But, yeah, to normalize in order to you know yeah normalize your your nature let's say but i also think the de facto default state that they say in the book oh men are strong women are yeah, yeah. Women so are that to me that is those, uh, those conversations yeah. to me are like so the, the way that they put it in the book is um, they talk about the perception that people usually have. So, for example, on average, if you would take, let's say, a tall person, mm. I mean, we're all quite tall. Um, quite. Quite. <laughs> I mean, no, honestly, uh, yeah. we're quite tall. So let's uh, let's pick another example. Let's say you have a disability, right? Yeah. And it's a visible, visible disability. Mm. Um, arm or leg or that projects certain that makes other people feel in a certain way is that is that correct yeah. is that uh, too much to say, say yeah. no, no. would you would you think would you say that the way that a visible disability on a person makes other people feel mm. is that predictable it depends. It, yeah. No, right. no, but is it predictable in a sense of you can actually make a distribution or, you know, each person will react differently. I think you can, you can definitely normalize, let's say, find an average of the reaction of what people will have when they see that disability. They actually put uh, a section on disability. Yeah, yeah. I so, remember, yeah, I remember, yeah. Yeah, I, I really like that, uh, that section. So when people see another person with a disability, the thing that they think about is weakness. Not you only know, weakness, they feel sorry. And they feel it's sorry, pity. exactly. It's, it's pity. pity that it's pity. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pity. yeah, yeah. Because you don't have strength, so you fall into the pity category. Yeah, but like that's... that's yeah, because that you're trying to sympathize. Exactly, Imag exactly. Imagine yeah, yeah, yeah. yourself... Uh, no, but is it a bad thing? Is it a bad thing, though? I think it can be. I think it can, it be. can be. Yeah, yeah, but it's natural, though. If you if, you, know if uh, right now yeah. right now if you I just society, see a person society imposed, yeah. I think it, I think it, like it depends on the of the person that actually has a disability and how he how they treat him. how he yeah. project yeah yeah, yeah. so uh, to make the distinction now yeah so the way that so the book first of all te uh, talks about the things about yourself the objective things and what they project but the impression that you have of me. Actually, I, I remember this example, which I quite liked. They said about, uh, they made a study, they made a study and they took Who the yearbook, the, the yearbook, uh, I, I don't actually remember the details. It's in, it's in there, I think it was maybe a Stanford. Uh, mm. I'm pretty sure it was a Stanford actually, a Stanford experiment. They took the yearbook uh, from a certain year and give it to a number of uh, people that didn't know those uh, people in the yearbook. And they wanted to classify them, or I think it was on a scale of attractiveness or something oh. like that. Uh, I, I, I think it was attractiveness. Maybe, maybe it was attractiveness. 
and then they looked up the scores how did they look and then they made the people from the yearbook them you know the the people from the year actually classified the same uh, the same index uh, maybe it was attractiveness maybe it was something else mm -hmm. but the thing is that the people that actually were uh, in that year part of the cohort gave completely different scores than the external people because external people could only you know look at you they don't know you the only thing that they can see about you is your face ah do you do you have the marks of a person that smiles a lot you know yeah, you should yeah. have uh, wrinkles over here or i don't know some yeah. some form of you know naturally you you think of this if i see you that you have a beard you know maybe i might uh, think of something I'm a, a, lot, pirate, yeah. a lot a lot more <laughs> testosterone <laughs> a lot more testosterone yeah. or, or something so they the way that they classified, the, the way that they marked these people on that scale that they chose was completely different because the thing that dictates the perception that people have of each other is uh, created after you communicate with them, after you have a conversation with them, after you spend some time with them. That impression that you have just by you know taking a photo and seeing how you're dressed, what you're wearing, is your uh, hairstyle, uh, you know, all over the place? Uh, you know, all those things just fall away. After you have a five minute conversation, you definitely won't have that first impression. So, you know, we just talk about, uh, just to make a distinction. So there are things that you just have that project a certain characteristic. Do you want to go deeper with that? Yeah, yeah for right. sure. Please. If you want to pick your... Uh, I don't think that there is a it. prefabrication in human minds yeah. regarding that you have a disability. So oh, I hope so, there isn't. <laughs> or I hope there isn't, yeah. yeah. But I, what I know is that when you... Let's say, let's say that you have a human baby here, okay? Yeah, yeah. And he or she grows up. The things, the messages, the subliminal messages, the behaviors that the baby can and as a grow as uh, she or he grows up takes messages i think it's about social mm -hmm. um social models out there okay mm. and social even and socialized, socialized yeah, yeah, yeah. and everything so if let's say your mother because of your grandmother because of you know all the lines back yeah they had some kind of an accident mm -hmm. and they didn't have like the left arm yeah okay there are many ways and many perspectives to see at that. If you live with a person that has a, dis uh, a disability, you know how to treat this kind of person because you you live with them, okay? You can okay. analyze so all the interaction okay, okay, okay. that you're having. Yeah, 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 that's what I'm trying. So even the person that, let's say that his grandmother also got a disability. So they already knew how to treat those people, yep. okay? And it's, it's bad to say those people because we are all people, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But only to, yeah. to make it simple. People with disabilities. Okay? So, most of these people, they say, uh, and also there's a great movie, I cannot really remember, with a French guy, black French guy, uh, who treats, who takes care of a wealthy man. It's a French movie, very well known. It's, French movie? It's great. You know, ah, I think I think uh, you know what you yeah. mean. It's uh, untouched, intouchables. I think. Yeah, right. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I know what I mean. Yeah. Great movie. Do you, if you remember he, the black man's behavior mm -hmm. to the to the man that he, he was like, he he didn't care that the man in front of him had a disability, which mm -hmm. means, I he treated like this man equally, in his own way. Okay. Yeah. So let's get back to the other example. Let's say that. Uh, let's say that you come from a rich family and you you didn't you didn't rich family and you mm -hmm. know with high self-esteem mm -hmm. and you know a lot of strength okay yeah. yeah exactly okay a lot of strength and you come across a guy like that with, uh, with the disability with a disability but you never had mm -hmm. in your background anything about that mm -hmm. when you didn't have anything the first impression it's something that you don't really know it so you don't really know how to behave yourself yep that's yeah. a, that's uh, the first that's thing right. that's so right. i don't know how to behave mm -hmm. and this moment let's say that you have a disability i don't know about disability and i see you you don't have an arm yeah at that particular time i'm going to create a schema a way that mm -hmm. i'm gonna trick other people yeah. in the future mm -hmm. okay so there there the only thing is how you gonna project yourself to me then i create a new schema 
So this is a kind of a different perspective to see. It's only two examples. There are so many, mm -hmm. so many out there because our minds are different maps, mm. different. Uh, I mean, we have different inputs and outputs, and you cannot really know. Even one one tag, one tick of uh, different behavior could change the whole mindset. Okay, for a specific part, let's say for uh, people that they have disability. Mm -hmm. So it's not like a natural instinct when we when we see. A human being that has a disability to to feel pity, it's because of societies mm -hmm. that we born up or we grow up. Yeah, about. Because a, a I, I, I see yeah. that because mm -hmm. when I was younger, I thought that that I had to feel pity of these people, but I deciphered this information when I grow up, and I got involved with these people and I made you know and I learned that they're not different. But, but I, I think know, it also can. relates to how like people with disability to continue this example are treated mm -hmm. in different countries. Yeah. For me, moving to the UK, seeing like ramps, seeing like if you go to this if, 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 if you go to London, you can hear you can see the little little dots on the ground. That's because you have to be able to, to smell. They have uh, next to like uh, stoplights. You have you have an you have it in braille, so you can read it with your hand mm. and you pick up on things that like are made to make the world more inclusive. The problem is the world is not inclusively equal and it's not equal in its inclusivity. In the same sense of like I went to Japan again, it was a, it was a difficult argument because you don't really see people with disability because they're shunned from society. Mm. So there are differences in how like your particular society treats different people of like different races, different genders, different sexual orientations, different whatever. The problem is, I think you know, with the book, it's like ah, they give you a very like very white, very man-oriented kind of outlook at, at, at the world. And that's also part of my problem of like, it doesn't feel to me like it's sensitive to like other people in that way. I want to grab it from the, from the, from the... Gifford, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like what you said about the rams. Yeah. And mm -hmm. how you treat people as a society, those people, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. people with disabilities. I remember a, a very specific example back in Greece. Mm -hmm. We don't have like ramps where, where yeah. you want to go when a man or a woman is uh, on a wheelchair and you want to take a bus. It's they not really they need help. You need help, so mm -hmm. probably mm -hmm. the driver or some other people. But the thing is that the side effect is that those people, because they don't have access, easy access, mm -hmm. they kind of feeling about this, uh, themselves pity. Oh, because I cannot society. really. Yeah, yeah because yeah. they say I cannot self serve myself, mm -hmm. so I'm not really. Um, I, I don't worth uh, yeah. a damn. I don't worth anything. Yeah. And this creates because let's say that I am the man with a, on the wheelchair trying to, to hang on because there's no a special mm -hmm. handler or something, mm -hmm. and I'm in the bus and I want to have equality or inclusiveness around me. I cannot find it because somebody uh, somebody that has the privilege of having all his arms, all yeah. his legs, yeah. didn't think about me. So what the, the point is that the bottom line, this man that's going to take the bus and he, ha and he or she is going to have this experience, like, I cannot even handle, I can this going to create feelings into him mm -hmm. and this personality, which is going to project it to, the per to another person when they have a discussion. So this could actually enhance uh, what is already built as a stereotype, you see, you because this man is gonna have like, no, I'm, I'm not worth it, or what is this kind of society that don't treat me equally, mm -hmm. and all this kind of stuff. So, because I like the paradigm, the, the example that you said before, it's also very um, rooted to the society. Mm. Yeah, Th yeah, that's why it feels natural. So, so a particular, that's my point is to a particular slice of the society. Yeah. From privilege, so there's a certain point of privilege, there's a certain point of like, hey, like we don't lack anything. We, you know, we don't. It, 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 it's the white man perspective mm -hmm. that you're given. So if we try to go a little bit more practical, uh, yeah. the disability example, it's uh, could be good. So let's uh, let's say you're meeting a person with a new disability that you don't know it's visible and it's clearly showing that they cannot uh, perform easy tasks mm -hmm. uh, let's say parkinson's parkinson's yeah you start trembling it's like that huh? yeah, yeah yeah so right now really practical mm -hmm. i really want to pick your minds mm -hmm. yeah. you see a person with parkinson's yeah 
let's say uh, they're over there and uh, they're trying to pick up a teacup and they're pi oil. they're picking it up <laughs> but they're gonna grab it uh, sorry with their hand yeah yeah okay. yeah and then you know they're shaky and they're spilling it all over the place okay mm. what are your thoughts how are you gonna react to it they want some help they need some help first of all you are of service to, to people who struggle you are always of service but you have to give them the choice if you want hey like do you need help is everything okay are you good first you check and then they say hey i'm struggling but i'm okay then it's on you if, if they say hey actually I, I i would i would love your help then you go help it's all about phrasing it's all about like hey I recognize that you're struggling. I'm here if you need so me. If I, we, I present you with a choice. If we try to put it in strength and warm yeah. speak. Mm -hmm. So because we see the disability, we classify it as less strength. So they have less influence on the world around them. Mm -hmm. So now you're in the position of a helper. You mm -hmm. are the person with the strength that can help them perform the task at hand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. In order to make this communication, because we're talking about difficult social situations, right? It, okay, it doesn't need to be difficult, but it's a non-standard yeah, social yeah. situation, right? So in order to make this communication effective, if you're starting with a, let's say, so you said that your instinct is to offer them help straight away. At least ask for help, right? There is give give them and the, put them in the driving seat. So like, how would you like to, to be helped? Mm -hmm. So, in that moment, uh, if we're going a little bit further, that will make them feel not less, capable. Yeah, yeah, not capable. So even even less powerful. So I uh, my question right here is: in order for the communication to be effective, let's try to understand. What should the person, you know, you, what mm -hmm. should you do? What should the person with Parkinson's do? Mm -hmm. So you're the strong person right now in this, uh, in it's this scenario. Right of course, I mean, because you yeah. have the power to perform the task that they want to do. So in order to make the communication effective, compelling people tells you, you should also be warm. Mm. You don't just go take the cup here. No. Here is your no, thing. Like, no, no, no. <laughs> because yeah, that's that's, but, but that's strength. Like, yeah. Strength without absolutely any word. That is yeah. You're competent. You like hey, it's like kind of yeah, like, yeah. Or or you you just go to them. You look at them, take the cup, and you know. No, you you you, you could actually, for me, what I would do would be to be more humorous about that. Okay. If I if that's I also thought yeah, about yeah, it, I would say like, awesome. do you need a bigger cup or something? Something yeah. to play yeah, that's around, great. you know? That's great, that's great. And now, what is uh, the response that the person with a disability should have? Because no matter what exactly you say and mm -hmm. how you say it, they might still react badly. But that's fine, that's on them. No, but, that's right. but, but now, that's on them. No, I understand that. You know. But now, let's, let's see it from both perspectives. Okay. Yeah. So, the, from the book, Compelling People teaches you to be warm in this situation. Yeah. Because you're strong by default. Mm -hmm. Okay? This is the... Just that. Okay. What should, I'm asking you now, yeah. what should the person with a disability, with Parkinson's, how should they behave? It's fine to ask for help if you need it. Like, and I think, I think at that point you're like, so hey. So for communication to yeah, be effective. it's like, it's not, it's not a sign of weakness to say, hey, I'm struggling. For me, it's always a sign of power to acknowledge your limitations, to acknowledge your defects, to acknowledge what you can do. That to me is the ultimate sign of power and strength is to acknowledge what you can and cannot do. Mm -hmm. It's fine, obviously, if you want to exceed your limits. It's fine, it's fine if you want to push yourself. But to me, being like, I, I simply cannot. Being vulnerable, letting yourself be vulnerable to like others helping you out, that to me is a sign of strength. Like, let's say I have a disability, I have Parkinson's. I'm like, hey, this happened. Can you please help me out? Like, I'm struggling. I'm, I'm really having a hard time. Can you please help me out? It's a simple question. It's, no, it's simple. So, so you're taking the warmth, only warmth, or no, right now you're saying that the gesture of ac actually asking for help, which it's, in an yeah. absolutely different social situation would mean that you're not fit for the job. For example, if you're doing it in a company now, completely changing the social, social situation, yeah. but keeping the framework intact. Okay. If you're asking for help, maybe some people in some social situation, mm. they will see you as weak. But now changing back to you having par actually Parkinson's, you're saying, that actually asking for help is what gives you strength. That that to me like gives no, me no, and yeah. uh, that feels right to me too. Yeah, 
but like, so, but again, no, it's just interesting yeah. how the same, absolutely the same uh, thing, absolutely the same uh, reaction or action can have absolutely different, yeah, different interpretation yeah. depending on the situation. Different results. The way I think about it, even at the workplace, I'm asking for help and you're like, no, I won't help you because we're like competing. To me, even the workplace, I, I think the way we think about the workplace is like, oh, it's 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 hard business. Like you have to fight your way to the top. Yeah. You so, have to, to me, it's yeah. always collaborative. It's always about like having a friendly environment. People, people who are competent will rise up to the top anyway. I, I truly believe in my heart of hearts that people who are good and competent and, and, and do good to other, others eventually have it good for, for themselves. So I think if you, if, if you just happen to be a good person in any sort of circumstance, success will come your way because you build it around you. I think if you like, if you see someone who's struggling at a workplace and you're like, I'm not gonna help him because, oh, like, why would I? When you need help, you won't receive it because the, the culture that you have yeah. around you, the culture that you, like you produce is the culture that you'll, you'll envelop yourself in. Yeah, and now, now we change the setting completely. completely. Yeah. yeah, so the same, exactly the same things that you said, given a different setting, might not work the same. So that's why it's also good to also have nuance. I mean, obviously. Yeah, yeah. always, always <laughs> have nuance. nuance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, because it's 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 good to show that you're proactive. It should. It's good to show that you're helping others. But yeah. given a different social situation, the same attitude of being helpful is gonna give you very bad results. How do you mean that? That's so yeah, I don't, I don't, you know, yeah, I don't, yeah. How uh, do you mean that? Yeah. yeah. So say, um, say in a company, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Also in a company. You are a senior in a senior position right now. Hmm. No, I, I want to find an example when actually you giving help is gonna be in your detrimental. detriment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. De detrimental. I so uh, because <laughs> I know, I know, for example, yeah. if you're giving help, let's say to just one person right yeah. now, okay. you're always giving and always paying attention to them, always giving them help. For example, that can be look between mother and kids, right? Yeah. If the mother puts absolutely everything at the feet of the kid, absolutely everything, in the end, the kid is not going to respect the mother and it's going to have uh, temper tantrums. That's very common. That's very common because if the mother always, you know, ah, you have a problem uh, p putting the laces, laces on your shoes, let me help you. Uh, do you have a problem putting the coat on? Let me help you. And then the kid is going to have the expectations of always being helped. And then he's going to turn around against the mother. So I'm just trying to, you know, find the same set of actions in a different setting. And they are actually going to be detrimental. If you're letting the kid figure out for themselves, it's, it's just some shoelaces. You showed him once, okay, this is how you do it, but you're not going to do it. Uh, the next 10 times he doesn't know how to do it. Maybe you're, you're gonna give him a tip or something mm. so that he can learn for himself. So look, do you agree in this situation, if you're always providing help, will, will that be beneficial? I think it's always beneficial. So a different example I'm thinking of, like yeah. let's say you, another person, me and Nikos, we're racing for, the, for a promotion for the same exact job and we're friends and we like speak about the job promotion. It's like, us helping each other, having advice, is not gonna be in my detriment because if you deserve it, and if I know that he deserves the job more than I and than I do, it's what if we both feel that we deserve but, it? But, that, but that's but that's fine. Like I, I think to me that's that, that's human decency. I think I, I think you you put human decency above performance because like if I know Nikos deserves a job and I'm like I will help you, I will I will chat with you. I think it's also like. I think success in this in this case we define as like this corporate ladder of like climbing up top and being like top. It's like that's kind of not the goal here. To to me, happiness and success and and this kind of thing is always like knowing that you've done enough, knowing that you've been the best version of yourself that you can be. That's to me yeah. more of a success than like any 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 other thing. If I help someone and it turns out to be my detriment, that's not really on me. I can't really blame myself for like helping someone, right? It's it's not really. Even if it bites me in the bum. I mean, uh, you can blame yourself. For example, on the street, somebody asks you, asks you for money and without yeah. realizing they steal your, yeah, uh, yeah. your wallet. It's the Spider-Man 1 question. If you've ever seen the movie, it's the scene when he doesn't stop the robber and then the robber kills his uncle. Spoilers yeah, yeah, yeah. for Spider-Man 1. You know the no, story, yeah. right? Yeah. And that's, that's, that's about responsibility. Like, Sp Peter Parker, Spider-Man, had a responsibility to like do the right thing and because he didn't, 
and then that eventually you know ended up like killing his uncle like mm. his inaction his inability i think always like being helpful i think it fosters a culture around you and that's kind of like the way i think about like helping other people yeah mm -hmm. but i mean uh, i think it's a little bit idealistic to think okay, that. absolutely you're right yeah i think I, I think you're more likely to be burned but then the people no. but, but, no, but, 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 but i think it's true but then there's also going to be times where you're not going to be burned and i think every single time you get burned if you're a nice person in general right i think the philosophy is like there will people there will be people who will take advantage of you 100 and that's happened to me personally but then there'll be the one person that doesn't the two people that do that don't the third the, the three people that don't and really appreciate you for who you are and what you are and that to me is more important and more valuable than all the times i ever got burned but uh, it's also not practical to have the same it's good to yeah. have so if you're a nice person as yeah. you say if we put it on the on the matrix on the on the matrix it's gonna be less strength and very much warmth mm -hmm. so so it's in that area right sure. it's, it's in the it's in that part of the it's in that part of the graph but see so, this is what i kind of want to dismount the strength one paradigm because i think strength is also how competent you are i think being competent yeah, yeah. i mean it's about how competent but, but you are i don't No, the thing that i want to say it's it's okay to be nice yeah you know i'm not saying it's not okay of course it's it's very good to be nice but it's necessary that you are strong when it's needed see i don't really believe in this like dog eat dog kind of world i know corporate is all about this i know business law is all about this i think we will all be better off if we don't have this is if there's more empathy and more compassion i think the world lacks compassion and empathy more so than it does like strength and people in power can you say that again so i think the world lacks empathy and compassion rather than more people in power i think yeah it lacks of that. I, I, i don't think we need more power i don't think we need m more people to rule yeah but I don't think that we... that's not saying that uh, let's ignore power altogether that wouldn't be wise because yeah, people yeah. that they are in power yeah. they could take advantage no, so of I, I i agree it's it's good to have more warmth and more empathy towards yeah. others it's good to cultivate those skills but it's yeah. also necessary to be able to show strength when it's needed. Yeah, but I, I don't think these two things exist exclusively. Uh, I don't know, like, I, I feel like, again, it's... Yeah, take, take the nice nice person example. Yeah. Uh, for example, I, yeah, I can actually um, give, uh, give a personal example. So, in church, whenever you... Sure. Uh, yeah, whenever you go to church, you find uh, beggars. And uh, some of those beggars, I'm not saying all of them, some of those beggars don't actually have any sort of good incentive. They're just there to get the money and uh, they're living. Maybe all that yeah. money, it's not actually going to them. It's going to some their sort. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. So they don't have any good incentive behind uh, asking for money. Hmm. And if you're always the nice person that gives the money away, you're actually yeah. supporting a very bad yeah, behavior that yeah, yeah. That's, that's also <laughs> yes. certain, you're giving them yeah. money you're giving them attention maybe you're even giving them uh, you know resources or yeah. people or yeah. connections you never know but it's it's not good to be nice here it's well, good yeah. to have the um, judgment to know how to yeah. act yes absolutely to me that's that's the degree of nicety that, that leads into you being naive mm -hmm. i think it's be it's good to be reasonable but also kind yeah yeah so exactly exactly so it's, it's good reason yeah, right? yeah, yeah. reasonable yeah. exactly so it's good to introduce this uh, you know this ways of acting in obviously, the world obviously you're not gonna help everyone in every case without knowing without like no, it's, but if it's you, not like you're just like infinitely charitable but when, when you are saying that uh, you know we need more empathy we, we need true, less yeah. less uh, people uh, well, in that, power yeah. then you're making it sound differently than okay let's be more empathetic but don't forget to be reasonable you know I, I, it sounds i don't think it's yeah. always extreme i don't think it's like you're either not empathetic or empathetic you're either nice or not nice i don't there's always a balance with everything right like spectrum this there's, there's about there's a spectrum and there's a balance you know i think yeah yeah, yeah. you can you can display different levels of uh, yeah mm -hmm. uh so we concentrated on compelling people up until yeah. up until now so let's i would want to focus uh, before we finish on um, the charisma myth i hate it 
also hate it. <laughs> you also hate it? No, it's, it's okay. This one, yeah. Uh, so, this book, as I mentioned previously, it's uh, much more practical than Complex People. We could actually think of it as a uh, complementary book uh -huh. because it uh, applies the knowledge of strength and warmth and the actually gives us exercises that we can go through. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, right now, if we can actually go through some, um, some one example uh, from the book. Uh, charisma building exercise it's about presence so the book says charisma this book says charisma equals warmth strength and presence so presence i'm not sure um, the definition thinking about the definition I mean, this is, yeah. I have a quote here that says being charismatic does not depend on how much time you have, but on how fully present you are in each interaction. How fully present. Yeah. Yeah. So you're listening to the other person. Yeah. The other person sees that you're giving them your full attention. So that that's about presence. Huh? And some it's not, people... It's not about time. It's about the effort that you invest into the conversation. It's about the time spent. Yeah, it's about yeah, the yeah. effort. The, mm -hmm. And the, the way that yeah. you project it, yeah. right? Because you could be listening maybe too intently and then you're too, too present. <laughs> you're projecting too much, you know, too much intensity. So mm -hmm. then, then it's not... Because you can overeat it. Yeah, yeah definitely. 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 So one interesting thing that the book talks about is that for people that... I think this book is actually very good for people that are struggling when it comes to projecting the right amount of... Um, maybe displaying the right <coughs> signals in certain mm. social situations yeah, yeah nasim taleb I, I don't know if you've ever heard no. the name the, he said uh, economist trader yeah. and um, a very intelligent person a writer of um, books about probability uh, the black swan mm. highly recommend mm. that book so nasim mm. taleb was uh, thinking about what would happen to those people that behave uh, so uh, in a pompous way yeah uh, if they had a rat shoved, you know, before the color of uh, their okay. shirts. So, you know, he would think of, you know, dropping. <laughs> dropping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, every time so that he influences himself to be more funny or to get himself into a certain mental state. So that's for ex yeah. a, a, an example of a, an exercise you can do to put yourself into a mental state. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's more charismatic. Mm -hmm. It's huh. not, it's actually a bad example. Uh, I'm going to justify it. Uh, what would it's be actually right talked example? about. Uh, what would be the right example in this specific occasion when you actually have to do with people that they like, you know, I'm the one, I'm better than you. So depending on your goals, right? Okay. So if you're if you're at a party and you're the waiter and those people behave that way, I mean, <laughs> what can you do? You're what just, if, you're what the if you're at the same company and you're working for the same company? Okay, so you don't know them. Probably they're superior, the, you know, superior, mm -hmm. uh, some kind of superiority. But how would you behave? So in in this context, just talking about myself, mm -hmm. as I as I behaved uh, in my company. Whenever you're in the presence of a person with power, you become a little bit more anxious because mm -hmm. they can affect you, you know, the direction of your career. Of their, of, their, of their fingers, yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. I mean, uh, this guy, you know, I don't like what he's yeah. saying. He can do that. You cannot blame him. I know. I also uh, I like the example of the rat just off the top of my head because I, yeah. I appreciate people who don't treat themselves super seriously. Like I really like, mm -hmm. and I think CEOs appreciate this as well. I think like if you're leading a company, I think you have people who are like so serious and then so so mm -hmm. all the time. I think when you have someone that treats you as a human being, like like not necessarily equals because you obviously don't have the same like socio economical status mm -hmm. probably, but like that speaks to you like a human being would. I think. People respect that. I think people respect when you're like, hey, like you're it's, just a human being like me, right? But it's also all about the nuances. In which kind of context can you talk like a, to another human being to a CEO? If you're in a very important meeting, I mean, and obviously you're not gonna be like, bro, <laughs> and, you know. And, no, no, but you're yeah. saying, you know, like a human being. Uh, you know, you uh, you need to display depending on the social circumstance. It's you, not you normal have... to a chat, you know. Like if you yeah. if you go and get well together, I think you can be like more relaxed and you can speak like about. You know, yeah. So if like you're meeting, yeah, yeah, if you're meeting uh, after, let's say the important meeting was over, yeah, it's over, I mean, and now you're, you're yeah, you're chat, having yeah. some nibbles, uh, just having a chat. Then 
yeah, it's okay to show some obviously not doing some it humor media, when you like, hey, like show me the specs, and you're like, uh, yeah, uh, or you know, depend, or so let's say must, it's yeah. let's say it's not so formal. Let's say you're with the CEO and yeah. you're walking. For example, in my company, we had a factory, so yeah. you are walking yeah. all the time, mm-hmm. and sometimes you are walking with other people from one point to the other. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if you and the CEO and another important director are all together, I mean, how do you behave? But because it, it definitely shows if you're if you're humorous yeah. or you tell a story i think that's the best way to go because this is uh, stories and humor are, are very good ways of proving your social prowess right mm. the charisma yeah, sure. that, that, that's yeah, the charisma. Be a great way I those are if if you are a good storyteller and you have a good story to tell or you have good humor it's it's good to go that direction, but as the book says, actually at one point, if you weren't the the kid that was voted as the funniest uh, in high school, mm-hmm. then you should probably think of not going the humor way. Obviously, yeah. humor is complicated. Yeah, yeah. Humor is difficult. Like don't take yeah, don't exactly, take risks. Exactly. Like, so like, if you know that you're funny, yeah, like, and, it's not gonna work. Yeah, if you know that you're funny and you've been validated all the time. Yeah. Then yeah, you you can use it without you know too much uh, concern. Yeah. Concern exactly. So you know in this social situation, yeah. CEO, director, it's okay. But if you go the strength way, you know, like you said, oh everybody is serious and so on. They will just take you like a you know a square. Okay, That's this person yeah. this person knows just how to be technical. Yeah, and I cannot uh, have a you know, simple conversation mm. with him. To I, get I think more it's inside. the difference to me between speaking strictly business and letting yourself exist. You know, like to me, it's like you're in the phone meeting. Okay, this is business. You know, like you're in the phone meeting, you have to behave in a certain way. That's business. I think if you work with your CEO, I think obviously there's still factors at hand, mm-hmm. but I think you can afford yourself to be like, so hey, like, did you see, did you watch the Euros? Like England lost, mm-hmm. haha, was the fact. Ah, like, yeah, yeah, you can the, definitely the, do You can that, find yeah. common interests, like speculate and things. Like let's Based say, yeah, ground, yeah. let's say it's a computer, it's a computer, it's IBM. It's the first computer okay. that comes to my mind. You like, you know, head to head with the, the guy from yeah, IBM. You speak about computers, like it's fine. Like I think being genuine, like people really value that, you know, like even trying to at least make an effort. I think most people are afraid of CEOs. Oh, definitely. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Even, so I think, even, you, you know, like I'm thinking like if I were a CEO, well, like everyone to be like scared, like no, afraid not to I mean, I would, like, they would, I would be would, by default. Yeah. Though. I would more like appreciate the people who like have a bit of like fiber of mm. like actually show me something, you know, show me, show me that you, you can make conversation. So in terms of that, it's. What, what am I thinking now? So we have the CEO and uh, mm-hmm. it's, it's you also. Like I said, you ask about the game. Sure. Maybe, maybe the CEO is, uh, is very busy. So the, the thing that I wanted to actually address is that in certain circumstances, you have emotions that direct your actions no, to a large know. degree. Mm-hmm. And the Charisma Meet talks about some exercises and some methods that you can use to alleviate that situation yeah. and to make you in power of your own actions. Mm-hmm. Most, in, in a circumstance like this, for me, the, the CEO is close or the director is close. I'm a little bit more anxious uh-huh. because now I don't want to... I was the youngest person in my company the least experienced so in a sense you know i was the weakest because i had the least um, the least stuff to give yeah right i don't have yeah. experience in the in, in this field i don't have a stu- specific studies uh, you know in what the company does i was just a data analyst i, I know about yeah. computers but not about the company at large mm-hmm. so talking with the director i could uh, in terms of company i could only say a few things about you know what i was doing but otherwise you know what, what else I, <laughs> I, I could say so i Naturally, I was a little bit anxious about how to behave my, you know, how to behave myself. But, but this book would come with some some good methods to alleviate that, uh, Nikos. Yeah, yeah, I'm just trying to understand you and your situation. What I see is that because you precondition yourself that you're not capable of deliver or create value yeah, to yeah. the company, mm-hmm. yeah. you became action. So no. yeah, yeah, that's it's right. It's the that's stories right. that what I would like to, to stress here is that it's the way we communicate with ourselves, mm-hmm. the self narration. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is what the actually, internal, yeah. internal, this, yeah, yeah this called self narration. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so the way we communicate with ourselves, Sooner or later, it's gonna get out, mm-hmm. and people w- will see that. Mm-hmm. 
So these practical exercises, if you can also change the vocabulary you when you speak to yourself, if you change your vocabulary, because words uh, have power. Oh, okay? absolutely. So if you if you learn more uh, more more words, then what you get back is that you have a better understanding of a specific experience because now you can give out all the details mm -hmm. you can describe everything so you're more present mm -hmm. okay so if you can communicate with yourself in that way yeah yeah so imagine that okay yeah. you can change your mood whenever you want to some extent, yeah. right? Because you can definitely, I, I, something I picked up from what you said is like, hey, like, I'm the newest of the company, I, therefore I'm the weakest. If you reframe yeah. to me, down into like, I'm the youngest, I have the most potential yeah. to grow, that's already negative from, from yeah, a negative that's right, that's right, that's positive right. reinforcement of like, I, I'm, I have nothing to lose real, really here because I have the potential to go really far, right? So it's all about like how you think about your position. Yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. If you yeah. change the perspective, yeah. then you change the meaning. You, because you change the meaning, you change your emotions. You yeah, change your emotions, you change your behavior. Yeah, it's like that's right. So I, I, give, I give this uh, personal example because I think I'm not the only one that... Feels, no, it happens with everyone. Yeah, it happens with everyone. And it's good to know what to do to improve the situation. So like you said, change change the internal discussion change how you look change at the, the look yeah, things, yeah yeah exactly change the perspective so instead of i'm the i have the least experience so the least strength yeah. right now i put it i have the most the potential, most potential yeah. yeah so it's actually a very good way to put it yeah no, that's right that's right no that was great actually also learn new words try to yeah yeah it's <laughs> like a dictionary like, yeah, yeah it's good and try not only to learn try to use them the day you learn yeah. them mm -hmm. so you can communicate with those words because the slang, you know, mm. talking the slang or speaking the slang kind of makes you to di diminish your capabilities, which will affect your social image, which in turn will, we're going to hang around with the people that you share the same things, okay? The same yeah. images, the same experiences. And that's not really, that's not, cre that's not creating mm. real potential for you to develop and become more. So... I heard the, it was a podcast in another mm. podcast and they said if you wanted to expand yourself you need to expand the way you speak to yourself uh, and particularly and namely change the word that you use every mm. day so I would want actually uh, to address this point mm -hmm. and it's one of the main insights from the book mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think it's from compelling people actually Okay. if I remember correctly the way the things that you project so right now nikos i look at you i smile yeah and i say i hate you do you believe me now yes <laughs> no, no, no 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 not at all not at all Bizarre why exercise why? why are you flirting with me no, no, this is, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah no it, it actually yeah, it, it's, no no but why hate is love love is hate you know you it's cannot funny. hate someone by yeah, yeah. So you said change your words, mm -hmm. but actually in this communication, it's not the words that actually tell you how I feel. Yeah, it's about right? the language. It's, it's an about expression. It's yeah, and the book. The book actually says ninety percent, more than ninety. Uh, I think it's ninety-three percent of the understanding that we get from the communication with other people. Yes, it's it, coming not from words. It's how you say it. Tone of voice. Yeah. For sure. Tone of voice and visual cues. Yeah. So you see, you look at the face, you see how the face is, you see how their posture is, mm -hmm. and then the voice. When we communicate on the phone, you hear the same thing. Yeah, no, no. Right? You don't believe them. Right. If, if, if you hear the smile in the, <laughs> in the other person's voice, you know that they're not saying it, uh, you know, and they mean it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, this is about the communication. You don't believe what, what I just said. Yes, but this is non-verbal and parallel. Yeah, yeah. So well. talking about knowing how to communicate, it's it's also it's much more important to know to be aware of your body, mm -hmm. to be aware of the way that you're speaking, mm -hmm. to be aware of the pauses that you're making. Mm -hmm. Another example of you mentioned about immaturity, talking about talking in slang. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. When you're talking slang, you're projecting yeah immaturity, you're projecting inexperience, you're mm-hmm. projecting weakness. So choosing your words is good, but also you can be smart about it. You can also use slang, but you, if you have the right attitude, was, you know that's that was, called the yeah. chutzpah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If no, you, you're right. You can be cheeky with your CEO, and you can still get away with it, right? No, yeah, for sure. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. So using slang, it's it's also good, but you have to project the right signals for it to work. The right for sure. That's why I mean, what I was trying to to tell you before, it's not all. Of course, body language, it's, it's a catalyst, right? Yeah. But yeah. what I'm trying to say is that because you know more words okay mm-hmm. because you cannot really see yourself every day every every hour of a day you know you don't have a camera unless you're a vlogger okay <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but what i'm trying to say is that you already build a world inside of you but the way you talk mm-hmm. with yourself so if you change the talk because you cannot really you cannot really fool you cannot really be uh, you you cannot really be full aware of uh, of your body language. Hmm. <laughs> no, I, no, I, I get it. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. No, 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 no. That is blank. Is yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, you cannot really be fully aware of your body language mm-hmm. at every 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 hour of the day. Okay. Then speaking all the time, to yeah. yeah, all the time. Then changing the way you speak to yourself creates a broader perspective. Mm-hmm. Then because you have this broader perspective, you can see that you can use slang as well yeah because you can be more descriptive guy you can say mm-hmm. more mm-hmm. you you're not gonna say only the word of the slang you're gonna also use the body language because your mind has broader it's broader now because of the new words of how you yeah, decipher so new experiences it's, it's definitely part of the process it's a part of the pro- i'm not saying that is the only thing or but it's one of the process one of the key factors uh, I, I think also slang is not negative. Slang is not this. No, it's you not know, negative. I, I I think it's it's different settings, different different. You know, I think I think if like if I'm back home in my hometown and I know some slang and I'm like, hey, like this makes me feel more familiar. I'm I'm, I'm you know no, we build totally, relationships totally fine, with slang. Yeah. But if I'm not in if I'm outside that context, if we don't have internal slang or whatever, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. then it's fine. And you know, you said about like learning words. For me, it's, it, I would love that to be an, a natural process. I would, I would love for you know, for you to, for people to just generally accumulate knowledge, and from that you realize, oh wait, this is a, you know, this is something I've never mm. learned. Like I remember, one of my my big friends one time said a really big word. I'm like, hey, that's a big word. I was like, hey, I'm excited for you. They're like, hey, like I can tell that you've been listening, you've been reading, you've been mm. doing something that's like enhanced like your your life experience, right, in some way. And I'm like, I'm I'm happy for you that that's the case, right? So. I think when you see friends that like, I don't know, like become better version of of themselves, that's that's a good thing. In terms of like watching yourself, what good good ex- exercise I remember doing, at least the first until I got annoyed by it, mm-hmm. is watching yourself in the mirror, watching yourself perform in the mirror. Mm-hmm. So like uh, I, mm-hmm. yeah. with my public speaking thing, a big part of the the speech was not what's written, it's also delivery and performance. So like I would go to my dad. And I would perform my speech in front of him. I would go to my classmates. I would I would do a performance. But then also I would perform it in front of myself. I would also look at recordings of myself and be like, okay, well, I have the tendency to do this. How can I, how can I use it to my benefit in terms of like how can I make sure the good parts of what mm-hmm. how I act are those that remain. Are those those are the, the good parts I enforce. Like even me now with my hands. I, I have techniques that I have, I have, I have accumulated, you know, yeah, yeah. to make myself be understood. And I think if you're well aware of what you can do, what you can't do, I think that's that's going to be perfectly fine. So uh, looking at yourself, being more aware of yourself, even going to the extent of like filming yourself, performing in front yeah, of you, exactly, yeah, yeah, really yeah. helps. Yeah, uh, video, video is actually helps, the, best, yeah, yeah. the best way. Uh, the book recommends it yeah. by far for norm, non-verbal yeah. communication. Yeah. I and think now we're in the zoom era and the webcam era, I think mm. you see, we, we see it ourselves all the time when we're video chatting. Mm. I think it's really revolutionized how like we we interact with people, right? Because my POV, I see you guys, I don't really see myself because how can I, right? Mm. But when, you, when you're when filming, you're like, oh, I did, it's, it's, it's weird. Yeah, I did, yeah that's you know. right, that's right. But it's, it, so. it's, it's important also not to, uh, my final step, because I used to do this a lot, not to blame yourself for like mm. reactions that you might have, not to chastise yourself. It's fine if you make mistakes. Like, mm. yeah. No, no, it's Cause totally I, cause I think As long as you're the, yeah. doing something yeah, about cause it. Because I, I think you can go the other way of being like, oh, well, I, 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 I just did it in a way that was negative, that was aggressive. It's fine. Like, uh, you know, allow yourself to be imperfect. 
Yeah, no, that, that's right. That's no. a critical skill. So we, we've been talking about all these skills that are actually useful yeah. to put yourself into a better mental state. So we said about internal communication, internal conversation that we have with ourselves, the words that we're using, like you said, it was a negative word. Yeah, you mm. can put it, you can spin it in a different way so that it sounds better. Focus on the, the positives is always a good thing, no matter what you do. Definitely, I, I definitely it's a good mind. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a good mind. Yeah. yeah. So, but it's also the body language. Oh, yeah, that, for sure. Yeah. That not many people and look, if <laughs> I think so many people would draw so much from let's say a compulsory university course on body language, mm -hmm. uh, how to present yourself in presentations, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know how to speak, voice, voice yeah. is absolutely so critically important. Yeah, because it's much more different mm. than what we hear inside of us. Exactly, <laughs> and like you said video taking a video yeah. even for myself i am taking the video this podcast and the other yeah. ones that uh, i haven't published video. yeah yeah i listen to myself i hear myself i i look at myself and i see some gestures that i don't really like so yeah. it's the feedback that nobody really gives you and yeah. you need I, so for sure. because yeah. you're gonna feel yeah. like negative emotions and you don't really yeah. want to yeah yeah yeah, yeah 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 you exactly so you want to yeah. control that i i see myself how oh, okay at this point i was actually anxious and i showed it to the other people mm -hmm. no i shouldn't show that so even making this podcast helps me yeah yeah build a better no you're right you're being right. yeah being more able to project myself in the way that i want and and, and controlling so bring, controlling being yeah being precise about what you want to project so bring this conversation to, to stem and the and the humanities because you mentioned culture yeah that's the motivation i feel like in the humanities, this is always part of the conversation. Like that, that, that's the strange thing to me of like presentation, stern of voice, paratext, non-verbal communication. Like I remember having lessons and having you know sociology, like having uh, literature lessons. Well, it's like more oh, about practicality yeah, instead of theory. Yeah, but we had even the theory side of it. But we mm. also I remember in ninth grade I was fourteen, fifteen. My uh, my literature professor was like, "Hey, I'm gonna ask all of you to." Write a speech and perform it in front of the class. That's and great. I, you that's know, great. like that was that was a skill. And she was that's like, great. "Hey, like." But she, she didn't. She right. Yeah, she. Yeah. She didn't have to do that. On, uh, I mean, she would. She she speaks all the time. She basically being a teacher is sitting down and having a speech all the time. No, this but it a, was not part of the. Oh no 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 no. She, no, she no, was no, just no, great. Yeah, yeah, she, yeah, it was her initiative. She was like an hour every single week. That's We're going to have That's like three, four great. people come up in front and chat. We had a debate club that I used to go to. And we were like, we were like, hey, like, speak like this, do like, do things like this, like, part, like, yeah, yeah. chatting was a part so of So I, I would like to interrupt you uh, yeah. here. So was it more interactive in that way? So they, uh, your teacher would see you, how you actually behave during your presentation, and then she'll try to correct certain behaviors? It depends, you know. Did she give feedback? That's I, I remember she was like, oh wow, it's really good that you avoided that cacophony, because in Romania we have cacophonies. And she, she was like, hey, like we like this, this is good. Like, and she would ask the class, like, how, what do you think? And mm. it's good to see other people mm -hmm. do it as well. Yeah, if, if you receive feedback, feedback you know, yeah, like that's, 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 that was kind Absolutely of the thing great. of like, and even presentations. This went on uh, until like well, I was seventeen, eighteen. Mm -hmm. We have to, we had to give presentations on literature, and we, we had so much fun because we made groups and we made animation presentations. Mm -hmm. We had some like some theater, some role play. I did some theater as well. Mm -hmm. So like, I, I, I think. Part of like why well, you guys didn't have this because STEM kind of like pushes you away from these things, right? Mm -hmm. Like yeah. Nicholas obviously you mentioned being an actor, but I think there are so many invaluable skills that come with like allowing yourself to be seen. I think being in STEM kind of has you like dig your head and in, 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 into a you know problem and solving it, mm -hmm. and then being like these are my results. Please accept them. Look at my results. Whereas humanities is like it's sometimes yeah yeah exactly degree, that's you know? that's what STEM is like. Yeah, I have yeah. an example. So most big companies that they use like financial, mm -hmm. in the financial sector mm -hmm. or consulting. Nowadays, they want to hire people from, uh, from, from humanities, masters, from, humanities yeah. from philosophy, because they know how to speak to the clients. Yeah. And because also they said that all the maths and statistics that, they, uh, that we learned during the uh, undergraduate, mm -hmm. when you go to business and to the real world, they need to erase all your memory mm -hmm. about the math. Wipe you. Yeah, wipe, wipe you and then put you in your, in your knowledge. So, humanity is a great way because you learn how to interact with other yeah. people. 
and communicate with them. It's a better way because you learn how to express even your I mean, the whole world yeah. to the other people. And that's why, like you said, intensive university course and presentation. That is kind of theater. That is kind of acting. That is kind yeah, of yeah. No, that's you know, right. But somebody that, should yeah. say to people, these things are important. You should do them because right yeah. now it's it's up to you. Yeah. yeah. You have a an acting club. You have yeah, a theater yeah. club. Yeah. You can join it. You cannot join yeah. it. But nobody will ever say to you in a STEM degree. Yeah. In all my physics time, four years up to now, mm -hmm. I've never been told. I mean, the advice that I get on how to perform well in a presentation, zero. Yeah, yeah, that's I mean, we, we do have professional skills courses where, yeah, we learn how to make our CVs uh -huh. and, but it's nothing that I actually can act on. Mm -hmm. Okay, I know how to make a better CV, but I think I learned it more by asking the career service to give me feedback and so on. Mm. And I've done presentations on uh, the topics um, in my bachelor's and so on, but it's just one presentation. Yeah. In my comp, when I, when I was working, I had to do two or three presentations every single, mm. like new presentations yeah. every single week. They're presented to yeah. different people. It's the scale. It's not even there. You, you, STEM <laughs> does nothing, at least in my experience. Yeah, yeah. In UK, STEM does nothing yeah. for teaching people how important these soft skills mm. are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they make you aware. But I think, like you said, theater. This is theater. This is yeah. acting. They should say, "Go join a Good theater job. club. Yeah. Go join an act. Go, go be an actor." Yeah. This, this is how you learn this yeah, stuff. Yeah. I, I, this, have a, yeah. I have a good example. So my ex in Romania, she did STEM. She's now doing uh, um, engineering or aeronautical, aero, whatever. Yeah. Plane yeah. engineering. Plane. <laughs> plane. <laughs> whatever. Plane, plane yeah. Stuff. And then I remember chatting with her mom at some point and she was like, she told me, hey, like you have to understand, like my ex was such a introverted person before theater, before finding the theater company that she loved. And ever since she's become like this, this whole different person because yep. she's finally been allowed to express herself in a way that does her good to have friends to, 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 to share to share some sort of like you know bonds because I think again STEM is lonely as well in so many cases yeah. you know yeah, it it's not to mention that like writing and reading isn't the sort of activity because it very much is but like I think STEM is all about like results all about like the process of like yeah the way to find a solution i think that that is lonely you know yeah. and when you and then you push children into this like corporate world and then you realize they don't really know how to interact with other people because they've been doing for 15 years they've been preparing on their own they've been doing this on yeah yeah, yeah. That, that's, that's exactly right yeah. mathematics and physics yeah. that's exactly right engineering tends to be a little bit more little collaborative bit, yeah, yeah. so you know how many engineers uh, famous engineers can you yeah. tell me no. but how many famous mathematicians and yeah. physicists can you tell me you know, the engineers tend to be a little bit better suited yeah. for a corporate environment. But for myself, coming from physics, I really had a hard time at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Really didn't know how to behave mm -hmm. in certain situations. Again, presentations, I didn't know how much to share, how much to explain, exactly what to focus on. Mm -hmm. So it, it seems great that you had such yeah. an experience and you understood the importance of it so much earlier on. And yeah, I, I think it's a problem with STEM. Yeah, the that, problem that it, in the is always that, that it wrong, happens. Yeah. yeah, so. But we are all necessary to this world, right? <laughs> no, actually, no. <laughs> maybe no. not. No. Yeah, but many people suffer from this, definitely. Yeah. And uh, having having these tools, knowing how to talk well, being aware of how your voice sounds. Yeah. If it's very high, number one, hi advice. guys, yeah. hi guys, how are you? Uh, that doesn't sound very confident. <laughs> this is a, a, a behind the scenes kind of the podcast. When yeah. recording even the podcast I have, there's always a bit of insecurity of like, oh, do I, how do I sound? How do you sound? Like mm. you, you can so easily like pinpoint the bad things about it. But like my advice also is just like, just do it. Some, no one will, will like get you down the way you do. So like if you want to record, if you want to act, mm. if you want to perform, the hard part is just literally beginning. It's putting yourself out there. You know, we mentioned at the beginning of like, how many people did you have to perform in? When I went to the European Youth Parliament, I had 300, 400 young people Oof. like myself to give a speech in. Absolutely. Because yeah. it, it was a conference hall. And I peed my pants and I shaked and I was so nervous. And Character then, building experience. Yeah, and then I, 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 I didn't pee my pants, obviously. It's a metaphor. Yeah. But, but I, went, I, went, I went back to Is my it? friends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, went, I went back to my friends and I was like, how was it? And they were like, you were so confident. You were so good. And it's like, what's in your head sometimes? Yeah. It's like, like, it doesn't show, right? And 
I think just 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 have courage. Just make the, make the jump, take the plunge, even if you don't. So don't take the plunge if it's an important situation. It depends. It, like yeah, it if depends. you're yeah yeah. So it's good to take the plunge, but it's good to take the plunge in uh, situations with no stakes or with very low stakes. If you're in an acting uh, club, yeah, you can definitely go overboard with overreactions and so on just to see how That's you. So you funny what happened. <laughs> 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 I, I I mean I, I I think honestly I think theater people, people know, yeah. are the weirdest people on earth or artists in general. You heard that here, kids. <laughs> I mean, you you do all these sorts of stuff. Even uh, they were including uh, examples in the book. Like they mm. make uh, them curl up on the floor for five minutes, mm. uh, you know, in fetus yeah. position to see how they feel, and then to wave around like a chimpanzee yeah, yeah. and so on. So I mean, uh, and you know, this is a benign example, but I think yeah. they they do much worse stuff. Yeah, but it works. Yeah, it works. Yeah. So what I wanted to say, to add up on mm. on what you said, take the risk. No. But it's good to take the risk when there is Educated low stakes. Risks. Educated, Educated risks. Balance risks. the reasonable risk. Don't like take the plunge and be like. Yeah, oh, because well. in, a, in a professional <laughs> presentation, a to take a yeah, plunge now and like, like one it. one wrong move in a presentation in your company can yeah. cost you very much. Yeah. But if you're doing this uh, very many wrong, mo- let's say you make the bad joke in an important presentation. Yeah. <laughs> but it lands like, bad. That's it. You're never going. But it's also important to shake it off. It's also important to like let go. You've tried. Trying it, not trying is the ultimate failure. Trying and failing. At some point you'll get it. Yeah. <laughs> you'll make it yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, if you're if you're trying without strategy and just Again, doing it's it not about like being mindless, it's about like just trying. No, no, but I think it's worth seeing also when. So no, it's great that we found common ground here. Mm. Definitely, nonverbal communication is a very important part, and also mindset. Mm-hmm. And mindset, a lot of it starting from the internal conversation that you have with yourself. Yeah. That is dictating a lot of the signals that actually mm-hmm. come out of you. And the charisma myth is so it's all about that, giving you practical exercises to build up also the internal conversation, so that you're displaying naturally. As you said, I, uh, at one point you, you mentioned that you, uh, Nikos, that you cannot pay attention to... I'll take credit for that. Yeah. <laughs> you cannot pay attention to your expression all the time. Mm-hmm. And that's right. Mm-hmm. The micro expressions are the things that we notice about other people in less than half a second. Mm-hmm. I mean, can you think about four micro expressions that you're doing right now in less than half a second? No idea. Exactly. So it well, needs some of them. But some of them, yeah. Way. Maybe you're thinking, ah, okay, about my face, or you know, I'm, uh, or my eyes, or I don't know, some something like that. But it all works well when it's flowing from your mental state. Mm. For sure. Yeah. So. And we need to expose ourselves to new yeah, experiences. To new experiences. Right? To, no. To f- to have yeah. that range. To have that range. So okay. acting, acting is a great way. I highly recommend it. And I think you do too. Yeah. Public speaking. Yeah, anything that gets you out of theater. Speaking, yeah. Why not? Yeah, yeah. Seeing how how you react in different situations give you that understanding of yourself yeah. that will help you perform well in a work environment, you know, in your personal life, romantic life, whatever. Yeah. So I guess this this wraps up the communication the episode on communication. Thank you guys very much for participating and uh, having your input. I'll see you on the next one. Thank you. Bye.